So uh, the last couple of decades have seen a pretty radical transformation in how uh, households in developing countries are sourcing their consumption. Uh, traditionally, they would shop at mom-and-pop stores, at these traditional retailers, and increasingly in developing countries, people are going to sort of modern supermarkets. We were sort of interested in thinking about this question, uh, particularly because there's an enormous amount of policy interest, but very little work uh, uh, on these questions. Uh, and that policy interest comes from uh, governments and countries and regions uh, often regulating the uh, uh, entry of foreign retailers. In Latin America, they were sort of quite uh, liberalizing and allowed these, these companies to come in where they've come to dominate the retail landscape. Uh, in other countries, they've been much more uh, cautious. For example, India is currently having very large policy debates uh, on exactly these questions uh, with uh, the previous Congress government initially not allowing foreign retail uh, and now allowing, and then, uh, finally allowing some uh, before BJP came in and rolled that back. So these are sort of very contentious policy issues and uh, there really is a sort of lack of uh, evidence to help speak to these questions. So we looked at what happened in one particular context out of Mexico where there was a particularly uh, dramatic uh, uh, transformation with the entry of a large uh, foreign retailer, it was Walmart in this case, uh, although some others entered as well. Uh, and we study the period between 2001 and 2014 when uh, the number of foreign retailers went from a little over 300 uh, to 1,400. Uh, and essentially every major uh, population center in Mexico now has a foreign retailer. And what we found was that uh, there was a, a reasonably substantial effect on the prices in the domestic competitors. So one of these foreign retailers came in and uh, the other uh, retail stores in that location, prices fell by 3 to 4 percent. And so obviously that's of great benefit to consumers in that location, uh, but uh, the biggest sort of consumer benefits came for the fact that uh, a significant chunk of people in these uh, municipalities uh, actually went to shop in these foreign stores, and these foreign stores have substantially lower prices. Uh, on top of that, they offer more variety, different types of products, uh, different amenities, and there are huge market shares of these foreign stores after they've entered approximately 30% uh, of, of retail is spent at these stores uh, uh, once they've entered in these locations. That suggests there are very large uh, gains to these households given that they've all decided uh, to change where they shop. But you know, a lot of the debate is often centered around these negative effects, uh, which are potentially the closure of uh, traditional retailers, of mom and pop stores, uh, uh, or, or employment losses for people working in those sectors. We do find evidence of that. Uh, uh, there are, for example, uh, approximately 6% uh, wage declines in, in traditional uh, retail for the workers there. Uh, also, employment loss of about 11% in that sector, and as store closures, about 4% of both traditional and modern domestic stores are closing when these foreign stores enter. Uh, and while these are uh, certainly uh, not negligible, uh, the fact is that they affect a very small proportion of uh, the municipality, since most people are not employed in retail uh, uh, or derive incomes from uh, uh, owning retail businesses. And what that means is that in NECT, the uh, uh, effects are overwhelmingly positive. Uh, livelihoods go up by about 6% on average, uh, with, uh, of course, uh, certain households who were employed in retail uh, losing out. But uh, you know, on aggregate, those effects are swamped by the fact that uh, almost every household is gaining either because they themselves are shopping in these stores or because uh, uh, the stores they're shopping in have lowered their prices. In terms of policy relevance, we think uh, there maybe should be a, a sort of shift between uh, 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 you know, the weight put on discussions purely on a sort of small set of workers' incomes uh, to thinking also uh, about the sort of broader benefits uh, to the people who shop at these stores. The effects aren't totally uh, innocuous in the distributional sense. There are winners and losers, as I mentioned, shop owners are obviously uh, going to be uh, more adversely affected, but also uh, across the income distribution there are winners and losers. And in particular, uh, at least in, in Mexico, these foreign retailers were particularly attractive to wealthier buyers. The rich uh, disproportionately shop at these stores, and so they benefit more uh, uh, than the poorer households. Uh, although, uh, I should add, the poorer households also, uh, on, on aggregate, also gain, since a, a substantial number of them uh, are still going to these stores and still experience these price cuts uh, at the stores that they were previously going to in the sort of product categories they shop at.